you don't have any symptoms, then you don't really meet the definition of eosinophil esophagitis. So then you're left with a patient who has asymptomatic eosinophilia in the esophagus and what to do with that patient. Um, now, a caveat to that is to make sure they truly are asymptomatic. Some of the patients who tell you they have no symptoms, when you ask them further, they'll tell you, well, I don't have symptoms as long as I stay on a liquid diet or as long as I take pureed food or I take mashed potatoes and applesauce. But if I have steak, I'm going to have trouble swallowing. If I have a pill of medication, it's going to get stuck in my esophagus. So they're asymptomatic because they've changed their diet and they're not truly you know, asymptomatic. It's just because they've modified their diet. And that's one careful thing to make sure that the patient is truly asymptomatic and hasn't just modified their diet to make them asymptomatic. But if you have a patient that's completely asymptomatic, they can eat whatever they want, there's no changes in their diet, there's no change in their lifestyle, and all you find is eosinophils in the esophagus, um, my own uh, approach, clinical approach, is that I don't insist on those patients taking medications or diet. I will insist that they come back and see me in six months to a year to make sure they're not progressing over time, but I will not uh, insist that they take uh, treatment for the eosinophilic esophagitis in that situation.